Take me away to the coronary unit. Hey, let's have a look at this, sir. Yeah. Get down! Get down! Stop carpet! Imagine if he dies, it's murder. What else do we know about him? Apart from his love of the old west. Well, he's been busy. You see, he um, hit a shipping office in Port Botany yesterday. Hey, how do you know it was him? Well, he's got the same line in conversation. Right? Suck carpet? Yeah. Hey, does anyone remember a 70s criminal called Donny Hills? I was still in the nappies in the 70s, yeah. Donny Hills. The gunslinger? Yeah, the papers call him the cowboy bandit. Oh, come on, he'd be on the pension now, Jack. Mm, maybe, maybe not. We had the first robber to wear a fancy disguise, you know, full of punters. They can't give an accurate description. Yeah, but Donny Hills, he always said suck carpet, right? Was never like freeze or put your sorry, or put your hands up, was always suck carpet ombros. He's older than you look, Jack. Hey, I remember the war stories. Just take you to base somewhere else, will you? What is that? What? That. Breakfast? Well, it's not a cafeteria now. Get outside, you stink. Thought it was you. Donald Winston Oliver Hills. He sounds like the guys that handled my divorce. <laughs> He's 65 years old now. See, he told you. And he was released from Risdon Prison seven months ago. Tazzy, what's he doing? Touring the country's jails? Oh, he's probably back in town. He's back in business. Oh, come on. The guy we're chasing's pretty fit for 65, isn't he? You gonna dress there, huh? Oh, Jack, you're not serious, honestly. Excuse me, mate. Excuse me. Hmm? Uh, you would know a bloke who drinks around here by the name of Donny Hills, would you? <laughs> Seen the latest copy of The War Cry? You folk? A lot of good advice in there for us sinners. Yeah. Now, Donny Hills, eh? Now, he'd be a handsome fella. About three pick handles across the shoulders. Dead ring effects. Into this 
Hello, Donny. What's an old crim like you working for the Salvos, huh? Since when do the Jacks have gorgeous blue eyes, eh? Oh, sorry, boss. Just slipped out. Now, what do you want me for? Hey, there's a bloke getting around town. He's in a cowboy outfit, just pulling stick-ups. Sound familiar? Son, that was a lifetime ago. Yeah, but you're still looking pretty fit. Yeah, well, the good Lord keeps me fit. Plenty of exercise, fresh air, motivation. That's my secret. All right, mate. Well, the cowboy bandit, he put a young bloke in the hospital this morning. He's pretty bad. I'll say a prayer for him. Was it you, Donnie? Sorry. <laughs> World's full of cowboys. Yeah, cowboys that say suck carpet. <laughs> hey, Donnie? <laughs> suck carpet. Oh, I was a bad beggar. No argument about right. that. Where were you at 9am, Donnie? I was lecturing a lot of wharfies down the Earl of Stirling about the evils of drink. Yeah. Look, the barmaid will vouch for me. Her name's Conchita. Oh, Mick, they found the jet ski tucked away up the Lane Cove River. I oh, stolen at the Prince of Inwipe? Absolutely. So, uh, unfortunately, it means that he uh, had another car stashed or someone waiting to pick him up. I've got a feeling that he was a mate of Donnie Hills, you know. Might have been an old cellmate or something. OK, yeah, possibly. Well, I've rung Risdon Prison. Direct or check with him. That's good. OK, well, I'll go back through the records, see if I can find some known associate. Want one? <laughs> hey, Jeff, how you going? Man on a mission. Oh, just getting fit, Riley. You should try it sometime. You take it easy. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by take it easy? Well, I was just saying, you know, uh, blood pressure, cholesterol, your age. What are you, some sort of a health professional now? No, no, I'm not, I'm not having a go at you, sir. I used to play pin and squash, Riley. Pin and squash? I could run you into the ground, son. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see that, yeah. Fine. You got your gear here? <laughs> yeah? See you downstairs. Where have you been hiding those? 5K is enough for you. 5K will probably kill me. Hi. You're taking a break, eh? Already. I'll be back in half an hour. <laughs> This morning's robbery, note the bandana and the hat. Yeah, what about it? I'll tell you. OK, that's a robbery from 1978. That's Donny Hills in full flight. Same bandana. Yeah, well, similar bandana, right? Look, it could be the same guy, yeah? Yeah, I suppose it is odd. You know, the same outfit, the same M.O. turns up 20 years later, but... I mean, Donny Hills, come on. I mean, the guy's a salvo, right? You know, he's got an alibi. Yeah, I'll be checking his alibi. Listen, Jack, the detective that charged Donnie, mm. he's a mate of yours, isn't he? Yeah, Steve Pitts. He's my mentor. That's that guy who's up to his eyeballs and shit, that one. Yes, well, there have been a few crims coming out of the woodwork saying he loaded them up. Yeah, a lot of good crooks. Oh, all right, let's just talk to the integrity commission about that. Look, this is well, not... He got a lot of scum off the street, all right, you know? OK, it doesn't matter. I just want you to go and see him. All right, now, how many people here realise we had the plague here at the rocks at the turn of the century? No, no. Uh, no one? Yeah. Well, see, it was brought ashore by rats coming off the ships from India and China. OK, That's now, come along, take a leg. That's him? Yeah, that's him. <laughs> come on, sir. Uh, let the stones get cold now, do we? Steve. As I live and breathe, young John Edward Christie, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, oh, Steve good Pitts, this is uh, Detective Rachel Goldston. Good day. Glad to meet you. What are you doing with that? Yeah, well, I'm waiting for the Integrity Commission to drop the eggs, aren't I? Yeah. I mean, officially, I'm uh, I'm on leave without pay, oh. so it's a little sideline. Well, it beats pushing paper around a desk, yeah? That's a lesson here for you, Jack. Yeah. Ends never justify the means, mate. Anyway, thanks for uh, popping around, but... Um, Gotta go. Yeah, I, 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 Steve, do, do you recall a guy called uh, Donny Hills, right? Well, there's a guy getting around town, he's pulling jobs, he's using the same cowboy ammo, right? Even down to the same line of chat. Well, why are you telling me? Well, do you recall if you had any mates, anyone we can hang this on? You know me, mate. You can't believe a word I say. I'm a famous liar. Pub this morning, the barmaid wouldn't have known the difference. What do you think a 65 year old's going to choose a jet ski as a getaway vehicle? Hey, why not? Well, let's just you know? tail him, find out, right? On the basis of a 20 year old MO, 
I don't think so. Uh, I suppose a tail on Steve Pitts is out of the question. Hey. Well, what are we following Steve for? Well, because he knows the M.O. backwards, right? He was there to souvenir the bandana and the hat, and he's got a big grudge against law and order. There's going to be at least a dozen tourists, right, that can vouch for his whereabouts. Well, I hope so. I really do. I hope Rachel's so. Rachel's one of the good guys. Well, let's just, you know, follow him just for the hell of it, all, all right? All right, I'll do it. Okay. All right. Bad news. Uh, the maitre d' of the restaurant this morning, pronounced dead a few minutes ago. Confirmed armed hold up at City North Duty Free Shop, 1075 George Street. One male offender wearing a broad brimmed hat and a red bandana seen heading on foot for circular key in possession of a revolver. Yeah, Where's right. Nemesis? Um, Gavin and Tommy are just looking well, off. BKG. Sydney Water Police, Police Launch Nemesis. You have a job at circular key. Sarge, we are on our way home. Well, I'm sorry, Gav, but there's an armed suspect fleeing from a robbery. Sorry, guys. Okay, keep us informed. Yep, thanks, bye. What's up? That cowboy bandit, right? What? Struck a duty-free store. Fifteen grand he got away with. He's keeping up a hell of a schedule, yeah? What's it? Two stick-ups within ten hours, three within three, three days? Three days, yeah, I know. Well, he must need the money or maybe get some sort of buzz yeah, out of it. He's not just walking in a petrol station, right? He's, he's, he's picking the, uh, the juicy targets. He's That's smart. Water, please. Um, water Police is the oldest police force in New South Wales. Oh, rules out Steve Pitts. Yeah, I guess so. Gee, that's very convenient. Yeah? Very convenient. Somebody else with you? My brother Joe! No. Are you ready, sir? Okay, this is what's going to happen next. We'll go back to the station, you'll be breath tested, then Chief Inspector Hawker and I will interview while this thing's still fresh in your mind. Gavin, have you got that? Gavin? Yeah, don't worry. I'll never forget a single detail. Hey, 
that guy Donny Hills? Yeah. He was at home watching television all afternoon, according to his landlady. Oh, well, Jet, he's probably stolen, but who knows? He may have left some prints behind. Oh, security him. tape from the store robbery. Hey, how are the boys? <sighs> I, I don't know. Helen's bringing him in right now. Well, whoever this bastard is, he's got two deaths to his credit now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, That's nine. fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. You want to see a doctor about that wrist? Nope. nope. Counselling. Did I mention counselling? I've organised for a couple of sarks to come here first thing tomorrow morning. Also, I've got some critical instrument stress leaflets. You need to read them. I'll get up. It was that cowboy who had to run about on us, all right? Cal, I'm, I'm so sorry. Can I get you anything? Time machine? Nice. Sykes, Jovita, upstairs. Whoever that is, that's not Donny Hills. Can you, uh, can you recognize that voice? Your office not big enough? Oh, you got the big TV. All right. You making any progress? Oh, no, not much. Yeah, well, you better catch him for Sykes' sake. I want my office back. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sit down, Sykes. I saw the upturned hole, the runabout. I slowed down immediately. Uh, we spotted a guy in the water calling for assistance, so, uh, of course, we did, and that's when I felt the vibration in the wheel. How close to the pile were you when you came around the headland? No closer than 30 metres. Um, the offender, he, he cut it pretty fine, but we went wider, as per regulations. Oh, that sucks. You see, you throttled back when you saw there'd been a collision. Mm-hmm. What speed did you throttle back to, Sykes? Slow. Four, maybe five knots. And then we came alongside the guy in the water. I, I stopped. But I had to keep the revs up to maintain the position. So we didn't know there was a second man in the water. I mean, this is down to the offender, right? I mean, he was the one... He was the one who sent the guy into the water, not me. I mean, Gavin... Mr. Mongano, Mr. Mongano was probably dead even before he, he got to the surface, right? Excuse me, we'll have to wait for the pathology report, OK? Yeah. All right, that's it for tonight, Sykes. No doubt internal affairs will want to have a talk with you tomorrow. We'll pass it on to the coroner. He'll decide if there's going to be an inquest. Sykes, don't go talking to Tavita about any of this until you've spoken to IA. It goes without saying that you're, you're off boat duty. When we came around Bradley's head, we must have been doing top speed. How close to the pile were you? Uh, not close, a safe distance. What? 10 metres, 50 metres? Uh, about 30. You sure about that? Well, look, sir, I was concentrating on the jet boat. I mean, it was doing top speed. We were in danger of losing it. The law stipulates that a boat has to be 30 metres or more from land if it's travelling in excess of 10 knots to ensure a maximum angle. I know, it. sir. I know. Well, I'll ask you again. How close to Bradley's head were you? I'm not sure. <clears throat> So, Jeff, what happens if there's an inquest and we're found to be culpable? Worst case scenario, someone's going to be charged with dangerous navigation causing death. Tommy! Hey! Yeah, I'll quiz you about how far we're from the park. Yeah. So, what'd you say? I said I didn't know. We were 30 metres away, easy. Probably more. Yeah, well, that may be the case, all right? But I can't swear to it. Thanks. Gavin, look, we are in this together. Oh, crap! Have you ever heard of a passenger being charged with dangerous driving? I'm on my own here. And I honestly can't count on you, can I? This dump. That's what he said. Hey, guys. 
Scotty. Yeah, what's the big surprise, hop along? Uh, a mate of mine from King's Cross Detectives gave me a bell last night. He says the Ambos visited an overdosed male, and guess what they found under his pillow? 38 caliber long barrel. Ballistics say it's the same one that was used in the restaurant hey, sticker. That looks familiar. Yeah, you're not wrong. Just look at this. Holy dooly, look at this. So what was in the bag? Maybe a three guess. No, two. Um, a cowboy hat and a bandana, yeah? Crime scene band, all right. Yeah, they're photographed and fingerprinted the lot. So our guy's a junkie, yeah? Yeah, they're fast or young. What's he doing living in a place like this, right? He could live in the Ritz. Oh, right, maybe he wanted a shooting gallery with no room service. Yeah, but junkies, right? They do stick ups for loose change, okay? You know, this guy's got a plan, he's got an MO that's oh, 20 yeah, years old. Maybe he's got a good sense of humour. They make this your pop gun tech. Yeah, cowboys and Indians, yeah? So, Pontiac. So where did they take you? St Vincent's Hospital. Um, I reckon we should pay him a visit, buy him a nice bowl of fruit. Yeah, but charge him with what? What, unlicensed pistol? Well, that's all we got because we can't ID him for the stick-up. It's uh, Iggy Devine, is it? G'day. Look, I've got some magazines for you. If you'd like them, I've got Unique Cars. I've got Who Weekly. Uh, no Playboy. Sorry. <laughs> Piss off. Oh, no, that's not very nice, is it? I'm a volunteer. Now, Iggy, I've heard that you've had a heroin overdose. Now, if you'd like me to get the drug counsellor in to come and have... Get out. Or you're religious at all? Because we've got a chaplain. Now, what I might do is I might get the chaplain in to come in and have a little... Get out you. or I'll bloody kick you out! Did you have an unhappy childhood? Is that why you're... Hey, hey! You're a nasty piece of work, aren't you? Death was caused by multiple wounds consistent with coming into contact with a boat's propeller. No, the injuries must have been post-mortem. I'm afraid not. It was a robber's boat that chopped him up, not mine. That was a jet boat, Sykes. It was the propeller on the nemesis that killed him. The pathologist has got it wrong. He's the one who made a mistake. Jeff need to organise a search warrant. We want to put a listening device in his car. Yeah, he has no permanent address. He virtually lives out of his car. Iggy, Iggy, what's that supposed to be oh, short Ignatius, for? Ignatius, I think, or maybe Iggy Pop? Iggy Pop, yeah, right. Yeah, hey, what's he got? He's got break, ender and steel, assault, car theft. Look, it's all really mine. Yeah, but we don't think he's acting alone. Yeah, right? there goes a listening device. We just hope he has business meetings in the car. Is there a connection between him and Donny Hills? No, I've checked that out. He's as clean as a whistle. No, oh, pigs might fly. Do it. Yeah. There it's Greek. Oh. Greek, yeah. You're looking very pasty, you know. Do you think you might be coming down with something? You want to mother someone? Go have a baby. I'm busy. How long do you reckon it'll take before he realises his shit is missing? Ah, oh, it's the first thing he's going to look for. About a minute, yeah. Mm. Hey, you know, it says here that Jerry Hall's seen a bit of Prince Charles. Oh, yeah? Which bit? All I'm trying to do here is act as a... as an escape valve. Mate, let's grab a seat. Just... chill out for a minute. You gotta let me in a little bit here, mate. A man died under my boat yesterday, and I regret it. Of course I do. I was just doing my job. And under the same circumstances, I wouldn't do it any different. Oh, well, you feel relaxed and comfortable about what happened then. Actually, no, I'm pretty pissed off. It's times like this where you expect your mates to stand by you. 
not mine. When the shit hits the fan, Tommy DeVita, he runs for cover, doesn't he? Just about had enough of you too, mate. The gun's busted. Yeah, Broken. Gun. Got you. Yeah. you gotta get me another piece for tonight. Well, how am I gonna look? Walking into the Fuji's without a gun. Fuji? What is that? Japanese restaurant? Yeah, I know I've got a green light. Look, you want your sparklies, don't you? Well, get us another shooter. What was it? The Fuji? The Fuji Apartments? What is it? The cinema? Oh, what, what no, is, no, it was, it was it? Sparklers, wasn't it? Was yeah, Sparklers, it was Sparklers. What yeah. is it? An apartment store? Usual place? Yeah, OK, cool. 4.30? Yeah, I'll be there. OK. Bye. Oh, God. Well, it's got to be jewellery, right? Sparklers? Yeah. yeah. Fuji. Fuji. Apple. Fuji. Apple. Yeah, Gosling. I thought you might want to know who the arresting officer was on Iggy's 1995 drug charge. Right, this meeting to pick up the guns at 4.30, OK? Now, I wonder what Steve-O's doing right now. Well, how should I know? Next time he comes over, I'll ask you. Look, Iggy said green light. Now, that sounds like cops speak to me. Sounds like Iggy speak to me. Oh, look, Steve Pitts, right? He's the original arresting officer of the Cowboy Bandit. Now we've got a connection between he and Iggy. I mean, how much more do you want? How much more? I don't want to talk to Jesus. I just want to see his face. Who said that? What? Ah, Smith and Keefe, right? Uh, Exile on Main yep. Street. That old 1970-something. Ah, That's my dad's yeah, oh, Good old dad. Well, you know, show me the proof, then I'll believe it. You really should say something to him, you know? Like what? Bad luck? Internal Affairs is satisfied with the investigation, Sykes. The brief will be going to the coroner. How long before he makes a decision? Well, he's going to try and attend to it immediately. Have you spoken to the counsellor? He spoke to me. I'll give him a chance. He's trying to help. Why don't you go home, Sykes? Relax. Relax. Yeah, right. You got any idea why the thieves might be interested in the shop today? We have an exhibition of engagement rings opening on Friday. Uh, it, the pieces are in the safe. Uh -huh. uh, was it advertised? It was mentioned in last weekend's newspaper supplement. Well, that narrows it down to people who can read. <laughs> Look, uh, do you mind if we take your place behind the counter today? It's just in case the bandit turns up. We cater to a specialist clientele. You don't look like you speak Japanese. Uh, konnichiwa. Tempura. Ah, uh, pretty fluent. Uh, okay, um, Sigourney Weaver. Too fierce, too intelligent. <laughs> <Living life. laughs> um, Jodie Foster? Yeah, now, now you're talking, yeah. Are you senior Constable Sykes? You are, aren't you? Who are you? Christina Mangano. Mangano? You don't even recognise the name, do you? You killed my father, Joe Mangano, Giuseppe Mangano. How did you find my address? Do you hear me? How did you find my address? You killed my father. Get out of here. Why aren't you going to say anything? The... Aren't you going to tell me how sorry you are? Get the hell out of here. You murdered him. I didn't even know that he my was dead. My dad never hurt anybody in his life. Come to me. 
Listen to me. It was an accident, all right? He just loved fishing. He didn't deserve to die. It was an accident, all right? A bloody accident. They just happened. <laughs> well, it wouldn't have happened if you'd been watching where you were going. I'm warning you. You better watch what you say. I hope they put you in prison, damn you! I'll not have an officer of mine brawling in the street, hey, Sykes. You call, you call me a murderer, sir. You're a police officer, Sykes. Now, just start acting so like one. So why am I kept behind a desk? What, are you afraid I'm going to add some notches to my back? Don't you be facetious, Sykes. It's not in you. When you address me, you call me sir. Do you understand that? Now, get out. Get out. I'm sorry, do sir. You do you understand? Do you understand? Quick, do Let's go. Oh, oh, sir. Oh. Quick, the special officer's having a heart attack. Oxy Barber, hurry up, the Oxy Barber. It's okay. I've got some help coming. It's gonna be okay. Blakemore? Yep. Yeah. No. When? Uh, have you spoken to his family? Yeah, okay, tell you better ring uh, Gail at work. Look, the number's in the front of Hawker's uh, diary on his desk. Mick, the target. Okay, look, you keep me informed. Jeff's had a heart attack. Yeah, Jack, firstly, Iggy Pop's on the move. You know, I knew something was going on. I should have said something. Ah, uh, you know, Jeff, you wouldn't have listened anyhow. Mm. Oh, uh, Helen said that Iggy's finally on the move. Oh, it's a bit late for his meeting then, eh? Yeah, but, you know, punctuality was never Iggy's strong point. Ah, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, mate. Um, shop's closed. Sorry, if we're finished? Okay. Tainara. <laughs> Two minutes. Two minutes and I would have been off duty. I wouldn't have even been at the wheel if Tommy hadn't have been so bloody clumsy. Fate had it in for me every step of the way. I like to think that, that, that life is like a balance sheet. You, you know, the, the good things you do, they make up for the bad. I, I really believe that... I'm not going to make up for this. It's, it's his daughter that I feel sorry for, yeah? Christina, that, that's her name, yeah? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> is there a Mrs Mangano? Never asked. The target's just getting out of the vehicle now, heading towards the Tilbury Hotel, right around the corner from Fuji's. Will do. Okay, thanks a lot. Keep trying the house. Jeff's having an angiogram to see the damage done to his heart. It's my fault. I shouldn't have taken him up on the channel. Oh, you're a bloke, aren't you? Thanks for making my day. Hey, someone just put a bullet in Iggy Devine's brain. Who? Don't know. Tudor was gone. You reckon it was the same bloke that sussed this place? What, shoot Iggy so he could do the job himself? I mean, that's crazy. Why have Iggy in the first place? A cannon fighter or make sure he always had a watertight alibi? Anyway, he's obviously called the scam off for today. Oh, well, I don't mind waiting around to see what happens. Eh? 
Why would you bother? He's got to know this place is going to be locked up. Huh? What? Mm, yeah, right. You want to see if you can catch up with that little uh, sales assistant, don't you? You reckon you got a chance there? No, I don't want to go there. Hey, what? What's that? You hear that? What's that coming from? Stop, police. Yeah, come on, get your hand behind your head. You know the drill. Hello, Stephen. Oh, this is embarrassing. What's this, another lesson you're going to teach me, Steve? Is it? Come on. No comment. Was Iggy Devine working for you? No comment. Did you set up the job so he could pull them off? No. What's the expression green light, mate? Something to do with traffic. Did you tell Iggy you had the green light? No. Where were you 5 p.m. this afternoon? Can't remember. So, uh, Steve Pitts gives uh, Iggy Devine this green light, right? He says, don't worry, mate, you know, I'll put the word out, no cop will touch him. The silly Iggy believes yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I know, but we can't prove anything, right? I mean, we've got nothing on Steve Pitts except this break-in. Yeah, and when the kid outlives his usefulness, you know, right, he ODs, he loses the gun, then Pitts puts yeah. a bullet in his brain. I know, I know, we've got no proof, right? I mean, wh what does he need that kid in the first place? Well, OK, the kid's a, he's a 20-year-old smoke screen, right? Uh, and he's leading us in one direction, you know, we're, to, we're sniffing mm. around this Donny Hills, right, mm. while Pitts is topping up his mm. super. You know, even if we get a witness to put him in the pub, you know, even if by some miracle, I don't know, we get, we get gunpowder residue on his hands, OK? We've got nothing on Pitts except... Good news, guys. Mm. Jeff's had his surgery and he's fine. Now, listen, there's a guy from crime scene waiting for you. I'll take the crime yeah. scene, now. Yeah. Wow, what a shocking 24 hours. Control commander collapsed with a heart attack. One of the boat crew ran down a member of the public, and now this. There'd be a cop, eh? So what happened, Steve? -O? Jeez, what a naive bloody question. Look, mate, you work your butt off trying to put these grims away. You see them walk, because they've got a better solicitor than you. They make the witnesses disappear. Maybe the jury just doesn't look at you. Decides they can't trust you because you're in a police uniform. So you learn the hard way, son. And then one day, one day you get a chance to really put someone away. All you gotta do is just cut a few corners. Now you're trying to tell me, mate, you've never cut the odd corner. It's a big step to pull on jobs yourself. A huge step to murder. Yeah, mate, well, a big step, that's just a lot of little steps, right? Look, I, uh, I never meant to cross the line. But here I am, 30 years down the track, and I'm looking back from the wrong side. So he'd be a cop. Look, why don't you reconsider your position, eh? Come clean. We can help point you in the right direction. No, forget it, mate. You got zip on me, old buddy. Zip. Excuse me. Uh, crime scene found this mobile phone in the toilet that Biggie was shot in. Now, uh, we think it's his. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the phone company records so we'll have a list of all the telephone numbers that were called from this phone. Now, is your number going to be on there, Steve? <sighs> you know, I've got to say, I, uh... <sighs> I had no idea you had any interest in me whatsoever. Neither did I. I was starting to get angry with you, though. Angry? Why? For feeling so sorry for yourself? Of course I'm feeling sorry for myself. I could go to jail, Taylor. You see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Gav, there is... There's a fatherless family out there, and you don't seem to give a damn. I can't cope with that. I don't know how to. Apparently he had an occlusion in the artery, but they've cleared it. 
No reason why you shouldn't make a full recovery. Where's Gail and the kids? Ah, uh, well, that's a good question. I can't find them. And, uh, look, I don't know if he's got any close friends, so maybe we're it. Oh, Steve Pitts put his hands up. For everything? Yeah, yeah, the murder of Vicky Devine. Yeah. Well, you do torture him. Yeah, they're going to want to make an example out of him. Oh, yeah. He'd be a cop, eh? Sit down, Gavin. How are you feeling? A little empty. Of course you do. OK, well, the coroner has at last responded to the brief of evidence. And since there are a couple of unanswered questions surrounding the death of Mr Mangano, he has decided that an inquest will, in fact, be necessary. <laughs> yeah, I understand. OK, in the interim, you're to remain on light duties. Actually, I don't think it's going to be for several weeks, Gavin, so if you've got any leave owing to you, now would be a damn good time to take it. It's up to you. If you do decide to stay, I would suggest that you keep up with the counselling. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Any questions? No. OK. Gavin. You're a terrific officer. I believe you'll come through this. Thanks.